Okay. Uh, thank you for having me today, and uh, thank you for staying uh, late. You have a busy day today. I think that shows your interest in uh, this uh, important workshop, which is really uh, don't come very often in our region that to have this kind of educational opportunities uh, in, in gate shop. Um, I think it will be uh, interesting to see. Uh, my task is really to uh, uh, give you just a quick review My task is maybe the easiest one to give you uh, uh, just fresh uh, review of our knowledge about the basic of the gate and gate development and uh, the deviation of uh, gate in normal children as well as in uh, children with disability, in particular the children with cerebral palsy. So uh, uh, what is gate? Is there a definition of the gate? Yes. And what is the gate deviation? Well, gate is something we do every day in our uh, life, and usually it's involved walking uh, with involvements of the multi-systems, including the musculoskeletal system, sensory system, motor system, to move forward or propel forward, and uh, in a rhythm called stride. Gate deviation, when the deviation of the gate uh, uh, due to impairment in the muscles, in the joint, uh, and reduced range of movement. I think you have to have a normal, all of these, uh, normal motor developments, uh, brain maturation, uh, 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 adequate the bone and joint function, uh, adequate range of movements, as well as uh, uh, sensory, in, uh, intact uh, sensory uh, system. Uh, gait developments, I think from the day of uh, one of birth, the gait start developing. The foundation of gait development is actually from birth when for the first few months, children usually, or babies, usually have this immature uh, movement uh, in kicking, in cyclic in movements, leg will be partially flexed in, uh, and inward. And as they grow older from three to seven months of age, they start releasing more mature movements with more stability in the movements. And they start able to sit and start crawling uh, as when, uh, let us see. How to make the video work? Yeah. Uh, they start crossing along furniture and uh, pushing the brand and uh, taking the first uh, uh, steps. The knowledge about uh, gate development is very important for us as a healthcare provider, as well as for parents to recognize any difficulties early on and uh, make appropriate intervention to help the children and support them to normally de develop normal gait uh, and achieve normal life. Normally, in the beginning, the gait in uh, uh, children or a toddler, a wide-based gait was flat-footed and uh, with hands on the side to maintain balance. As they go, uh, get uh, uh, older, a little bit older, they get the uh, refinement of the gait with the uh, increase of the greater time in a single limb, limb stance, as well as uh, uh, increased velocity and start running by two years of age, uh, increase uh, step length, uh, decrease in the cadence or the rhythm of the walking and uh, uh, decreasing the base of uh, support. Oh, is that? <laughs> okay. Uh, so by the age of eight years of age, they start uh, 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 walking like any adult. I think like any other condition, uh, many factors affecting gait uh, developments and the debate of nature and nurture is come here as well, because genetic factors, we all know that can impact gait developments either through any kind of genetic condition, muscular disorder, myopathies, etc., but also in the makeup of our uh, musculoskeletal system, there is a, a certain variation between races uh, about the shape of the pelvis, um, maybe African different from the Asian, from Caucasian, and that can reflect uh, uh, gait development as well. Uh, medical conditions, cerebral palsy, for example, environment, the experience we have in our environment does shape the way we talk, the way we walk, the way we behave in our society. Common gait deviation. There is many common gait deviation in normal children. One of the commonest is in towing and out towing, and we've seen it regularly in our clinic, pretty normal in normal children, uh, uh, very young uh, children. 
uh, usually due to twisting of the uh, uh, tibia uh, and, uh, and femur, uh, or both of them. And in the opposite direction, the autoim, usually children grow out of it by the six uh, or seven years of age. Occasionally, there is underlying orthopedic problem which need intervention. Another common example we see in our clinic is step to walking. Again, it's very common under the age of two and also uh, beyond two can be seen with a normal neurological examination. We call it idiopathic uh, step to walking. Uh, again, normally resolved, but sometimes needs certain intervention or ptosis. And if it stay longer, sometimes can cause shortness of them to Achilles. Deviation of children uh, uh, with cerebral palsy, get children in cerebral palsy. I think we visit this graph, which is a famous graph. I'm sure all of our colleagues in rehab and neurodisability, uh, they, they know this graph very well. It is the work done by uh, Professor Peter and his team studying uh, in a long-term or longitudinal studies uh, uh, in, in motor function in children with cerebral palsy. And he concluded that across the board at all levels, that majority of children with cerebral palsy achieve their motor potential by five years of age. And after that, they start plateauing, in particular, the level one and three. For the level four and five, they're plateauing much earlier at around the age of two, two and a half. When we looked at the prevalence of the uh, gait abnormalities in children with cerebral palsy, uh, as this uh, graph shows that the commonest is the quinus and crouch gait and stiff knee gait. That's the one we see in our clinic with a lesser extent, which is in towing and hip, hip flexion deformities. There is many effort me, being made to classify the different type of gait in children, uh, cerebral palsy to help us in uh, making the diagnosis and making the decision on best intervention. One of those classification, for example, in hemiplegia, they describe four types of uh, uh, hemiplegic pattern of uh, gait. The commonest is type two, Type one is quite rare, where there is weak dorsiflexors and foot drop. And the commonest is the uh, type two with the spasticity of the uh, uh, gastrosoleus. And the more muscles involvement, the more severity of the hemiplegic uh, gait with the severest one when involvement of the pelvic muscles, as well as the gastrosoleus muscles, uh, they call it jump, uh, uh, knee jump gait. This is just an example of the uh, hemiplegic gait, the Aquinas gait. Another example of that classification to make us better understand the gait in diaplegia is the gait pattern in spastic diaplegia, uh, four types as well. Uh, I think uh, we just want to pay attention uh, uh, from the true Aquinas to Crouch gait uh, and the difference between true Aquinas and apparent Aquinas, which is self explanatory by the uh, graph, where in true Aquinas that both uh, uh, knee, uh, knee and hip in a neutral position, but in the uh, type four, the Crouch gait, both hip and knee is flexed, where the uh, ankle is in a neutral position. In either way, there is a, a natural progression of uh, 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 Quinus to Crouch gait uh, for, in many uh, uh, children we've seen in our clinic and maybe to do with uh, sometimes uh, uh, neglect not being regularly followed up or having the early intervention uh, and also uh, due to other uh, causes. The worst we see in our clinic and is very kind of any attractive uh, gait, uh, very uh, attractive and energy consuming uh, gait uh, severe impairment is the one which is we, we see in this clip. It's very difficult to treat. Regrettably, is one of the commonest cause is the early surgical intervention with the uh, lengthening of the tendo Achilles with a, uh, uh, not, not uh, appropriate uh, time for uh, surgery. While on the relationship of surgery and cerebral palsy, this uh, cohort uh, of study shows or compare the children who never been through the under the knife of the surgeon and those who's been through surgery. And clearly they found that the surgical intervention children with cerebral palsy can reduce the odd of having equinus and in towing, but reducing the odd of having crouch and uh, uh, stiff knee uh, in both hemiplegia and in diaplegia. 
I think I kept on time. Uh, our next, next task is really to have uh, 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 two expert speakers, my colleague, Dr. Rehab, and uh, Ms. Sheena, uh, our uh, physiotherapist, and I'm sure you will enjoy their uh, uh, expertise. But before we do that, I think you've been busy all morning, and I give you some icebreaker for, uh, to enjoy. <laughs> 